Hello, Chathew. Good evening. Welcome. How are you? Seems like a pretty quiet night out there in Chatland. I know there's one or two of you out there, but uh, but it does seem like a pretty quiet one. How's it going? We're going to play a cruel trick on the folks that aren't here yet by vaulting right into gameplay very quickly because I have very little to talk about this evening. I don't know that I actually have anything to talk about this evening. Try, trying to think about it. Um, what, what do I have to talk about today? <laughs> I've drank too many things on stream. Well, that's unfortunate for you, is and I. Um... Yeah, what what is there to I don't know. Did anything happen today? It seems like a snow new, news day. A snow news day, a slow news day. I I went looking um but couldn't find anything. Oh yeah, I sexted Graham. That's right. That's right. I uh <laughs> So I went to a hobby shop. I went to a a hobby shop. Um and uh found some things that i'd been looking for i uh i i found panel line bottles of panel lining fluid which i was curious as to whether they were findable in vancouver they are and uh whether they would be cheaper than amazon they were and while i was there i happened to stumble across one of the gundams that i've been wanting to build the uh the rg new gundam RX-93 new Gundam, and, uh, and I almost bought it. I didn't buy it, but I almost bought it. So, so anyhow, <laughs> that was exciting. It's also, it was also much cheaper than Amazon. Amazon has that kit listed for like 130 bucks, and it was $75 at the, the hobby shop, which still feels like highway robbery. Like, that still feels like that's too expensive. But it it's a nice kit, and it's a sweet-looking robot son, I gotta say. I like the ones that are that are kind of asymmetrical, and and New Gundam is, like, peak asymmetrical. It's a very good looking kit. And I like the darker blues. I like the navies and yellows as compared to like the blues and reds. So the 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 colorway on it. Very appealing. But unfortunately I still have uh five five Gundams in the queue right now. So I have to build more Gundams before I'm allowed to Buy more Gundams. <laughs> Make says, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, so I have to build more Gundams before I buy more Gundams. So tomorrow, maybe I will build the, what is it, Strike Noir? I think I have the Strike Noir Gundam up next. That's right, the Strike Noir is the next one on the list. Which is actually kind of a goofy looking kit. Not gonna lie. But I'm gonna build it. This this gets to be a test run as I I continue to see whether I can get any better at panel lining. I might build this one tomorrow. We'll see. Not on stream, but I might build this one tomorrow just with my day. And uh, continue to work on my Gundam building building capability. Meg, yeah? if I build another Gundam, can I buy another Gundam? Yes. <laughs> as long as you get rid of the boxes. Which I have been. Perfect. Yes, dear. You can have. Several Gundams as a 
See, I, I, I'm gonna do this one because I want, I want my Curios and whatever the other one is. Curios and the main, the Exia. Curios and Exia. I want those two, two to turn out well. So I'm like, I'm putting practice into the ones that I don't care about as much. I have a great idea. Yes. We should hang them in the Christmas tree next year. <laughs> <laughs> Turn them into Christmas ornaments? Yeah. yeah. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Build a Gundam, buy a Gundam, so that I always have five in reserve. See, the thing is, I, like, I'm, I'm getting my hands on... This is the eternal problem with me, is I get my hands on the things before I'm ready to build them, right? So I, <laughs> I, I am like acquiring, I have a master grade and I've got a real grade on the way. And now I want to buy another real grade, but those require a level of skill that I'm not at yet, which means I need to just chew through a bunch of high grade models on the cheap before I start digging into the, the real grades and the master grade models. So I'm like... I'm running out of high grade kits that I don't care about. So I what I really need to do is I need to go get uh I really need need to go get another handful of uh of high grade kits. Maybe maybe still go buy the new Gundam that I was looking at, but I need to get a handful of of high grade kits that I can just rip through in a day and not concern myself with. Build a few high grades, build one to two master grades, then build real grades and and whatever you want. Are the uh, are the RGs are the RGs more detailed than the MGs? I assumed it was the other way around. I assumed the master grade kits had more detail than the real grade kits. RGs are MGs just smaller? Okay. So the, the detail is finer on the RGs then. Because they're smaller. Basically, I'm trying to gauge which is the same level of detail, same internal frame, just HG size. Oh, interesting. Okay. Hmm. Cool. So, to answer the question about grade size, high grade is the default Gundam model level. High grade is the, like, there's an entry grade, which is what we built on Desert Bus, is entry grade, which is very low detail, very low complexity. High grade is the default. Uh, master grade is the highly detailed one, but they're bigger because they're 1 100th scale instead of 1 1 1 44th. Uh, and so master grades are more complex than, than high grade models. They have more detail and are more complexity. And then there's real grade, which is the, the size and scale of a high grade model, but with the detail of a master grade model. And then there's perfect grade and perfect grade is for the pros. <laughs> so, yeah. I assume HG, I assume that high grade was the entry, like, was, at the time high grade was coined, I assume it was the top of the line. You had all the, like, Gundam build kits, and then you had the high grade kits, which had more detail and more articulation. But then they introduced, like, then I'm sure they introduced, like, the subsequent model types, and high grade got demoted in the scale and there's just been detail creep since then, yeah. This is also what happened to Starbucks sizes, I'm told. Well, that's just what happened to sizes in Italian, right? Because there was, there was short, then tall, then grande, which means large. But then Starbucks went bigger, or not Italian, but whatever. Who cares? 
And then venti, venti is a made up word that means 20 because it's a 20 ounce beverage. Because that's bigger than grande, because grande is a 16 ounce, ounce beverage. And then tronte is yet another made up word, which means 30 because it's a 30 ounce beverage. Unless you're in cold drinks, iced drinks. Ice drinks. If you if you get a if you get a venti hot drink, it's twenty ounces. If you get a grand, uh, if you get a venti iced drink, it's twenty four ounces. Similarly, if you get a a venti or sorry a trente drink, a trente hot drink, it's thirty ounces. And I th I think I think a trente I think a trente ice drink is thirty six. Like, it's not 32. That the ice drinks are different sizes to account for the ice. Right? Like, no, you... It's no, it's not the other way around. I thought the ice drinks were less volume. No, the ice drinks are more volume. I know that for a fact in the case of the Venti. I don't know about the Trente. The Trente is ridiculous. I've never ordered one. The Trente is obscene. But, uh... But, in the case of Venti... The, the liquid content is the same, but there's a cup of ice that gets dumped into it, so the cup has to be larger. All I know is that a venti iced mocha has three shots of espresso in it, which is a lot of shots of espresso. Right. This whole Gundam story started with me talking about how I sexted Graham. So, anyhow, while I was at the hobby shop lusting over this new Gundam, this new, new Gundam, I texted Meg about it and was like, haha, they do have the panel lining liquid that I was looking for, and also they have this Gundam model that I want to buy. I think I'm not going to buy it, though. And I assumed Meg was in a meeting, so I didn't get a message back from Meg. So I was like, alright, well, whatever. And uh, then I went to the store, and again, texted. I, uh, like, I couldn't find one of the items we were looking for, so I texted, like, uh, sorry, we struck out on this. And then I get a message back from Graham being like, Matt, this is Maine. Because apparently I'd been texting Graham the whole time. Uh, Ghost of Chef Goldblum, it's just regular shots. Three shots in a venti, not three double shots. That would be ridiculous. Three double shots of espresso. That's too many espressos. No one person should have all that power. The power contained by six shots of espresso. Okay, I want to fix my camera a little. That's fine. There we go. Much better. <sighs> you do see time a bit. Yeah, you would. You would see the flow and the ebb and flow of time itself. All right. That's pretty much all I have to talk about today. I played a little bit of Halo. That was, like, that was my other achievement of the day. I progressed a mission in Halo. I played some multiplayer because the Fracture Tenrai event is back on. I am, I think I'm currently level 93 on the Battle Pass of the available 100 levels. So I'm going to run out of Battle Pass levels here pretty quick. And then I don't have to play the multiplayer again till May. That's how that works, right? Don't tell them I said that. Did Boba Fett get better? Today's episode was... better.
I don't know that I would go so far as today's episode was good, but today's ev episode was better. They... <laughs> they dropped a reference that is actually quite clever and that I was amused by, but not in the moment because I didn't catch it in the moment. But I, I did... I did quite like it when I read about it later. Which, because it requires knowledge, it's not a lore thing, it just requires knowledge of the, like, the making of A New Hope. Which is that when they were making Star Wars A New Hope, they filmed the whole scene at Tashi Station. And, uh, and then it got cut from the final edit of A New Hope. Uh, but there was a whole scene filmed with Luke and a bunch of other characters at Tashi Station. And, uh, anyhow... Today's episode, they go to Tashi Station and the set is made up like the set was made up in A New Hope. And so it's just visual reference. They don't even mention it by name. But if you, if you know, then you know that the location that some events happen in today's episode is Tashi Station. And that's good. Like, that's a good reference. I like that. That's cute. Um... Then there was also a deep lore reference made in the episode, which I don't care about at all. But a Wookiee appears in the episode, and I won't tell you anything else about that. Um, and, and it is a deep lore reference, apparently. And that... I don't care. <laughs> I laughed! I laughed because the, the Wookiee in question is rad as hell. Um, but... I have no idea who it is in the lore, but it's some, like, deep EU reverend. Is there, like, a story? It's a train job. Today's episode was a train job. Yes, it had a story-ish. The whole episode was a flashback, so it didn't, like, advance the current narrative at all. Which is why I would not call today's episode good. But the train job, like, the... Today's episode was, like, it had fun moments and things I didn't like, or things I liked. It entertained me well enough. But it did not give me any further indication as to what this series is actually meant to be about. <laughs> Sam Wong says, there was a show people liked that had a second episode that was a train job. You're right, there was. Today's, uh, today's train job was not nearly as much fun as Fireflies was. I will I will say that and if you're comparing train job episodes today's today's episode of Boba Fett uh does not compare well to to the uh the Firefly train job episode so so <laughs> take it or leave it in that regard but anyhow today's episode was fine it was fine it wasn't it wasn't actively bad it was just fine the show still hasn't sold me I'm I'm going to watch it. Of course I'm going to watch it because I'm helpless but uh, and hopeless. <laughs> but uh but the show still has not really sold me. I think it was Ghost of Jeff Goldblum asked you really did not like The Mandalorian, right? And no, that's that's not right. I really like The Mandalorian. I think The Mandalorian is is actually very good. Except when it gets up its own ass. <laughs> so, there are a couple of episodes of The Mandalorian that I think are quite bad, but by and large I think the I think The Mandalorian is quite good. Uh you you probably got that idea in your head because I've been highly highly critical of the finale of season 2. I think the end of season two was a train wreck, and uh, and I have been I've not just been highly critical of the end of season two. I've been like even more vocally critical of the end of season two because the fan reaction to the end of season two was, "Oh, Dave Filioni has saved Star Wars," uh, which is uh, which is not what happened in that episode. <laughs> <laughs> that episode did not save Star Wars.
<laughs> I'm a devout Star Wars fan, which means I hate Star Wars. I... The thing is, I don't feel like I'm that big a Star Wars fan. I, I like Star Wars. How much Star Wars crap do I have around the, the house? It's not a lot. Two pieces of art in the bedroom. I have two Star Wars arts in the bedroom. One is the Ken Stacy Gone with the Wind print. So I own that because it's the Ken St it's a signed Ken Stacy print with the Empire Strike Back Gone with the Wind. So so like that's that I own because it was given to me by Ken. <laughs> and not so much because like it's Star Wars. It's just a like a nice print that I like. The other one I got for free. Kind of, kind of stole it from work. K kind of stole it from work. In, their de in your defense. The marketing manager said I could have it, so I just took it. I was gonna say they owe you far more money. Than it's true. Print. They owe me more than the value of that stupid print. But it was a test print because the. The studio was thinking about having some prints done for some of our own work, and uh, and so they gave it they gave it to me. It also never worked. It's never worked right. It's supposed, it's supposed to glow in the dark, and the glow in the dark ink doesn't work. So I have this like I have this landscape, and it's Tatooine. Uh, oh. It's a, it's a landscape of Tatooine. And at night, it's supposed to glow in the dark. And the glow in the dark is like an imperial... It's like the imperial station on on uh, Endor, I think. I've never been able to see it in full because the glow in the dark doesn't work. But, uh, but anyhow, it's supposed to be two landscapes from Star Wars. One that you can only see in the dark and one that you can only see in the day. But it doesn't work. So all, all you can see is the Tatooine backdrop. But it is, it is hand-signed by the artist as well. Oh. Yeah, so I have I have those. I have those. I have uh I have a little Lego ATST walker oh, yeah. kicking around. Yeah. But that's about it. Like Yeah. I I <laughs> It's not so much that I'm a fan of Star Wars, it's that I want to be a fan of Star Wars and Star Wars keeps pushing me away. That's really what it is. I want to like Star Wars. <laughs> I I think there's a lot of things in Star Wars that I would like to be a fan of. Oh, this is the other thing. Oh right, my Death Star bottle opener. Oh, and I have the droid from Rogue One. Graham gave me the the Lego Technic set of the droid from Rogue One, and I have that in the bedroom. This is there's my an illicit Lego in the bedroom. <laughs> illicit Lego. In the back. This was you. I've had that. Since no, it's it's on my dresser. Like it's on, oh, it's in the the cubby hole. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Star Wars would be great if it weren't for all the Star Wars. Really. It's not the Star Wars that's the problem. It's their focus on the Jedi. Just leave the Jedi out of it. They're the least interesting part of Star Wars. Yeah, the Alan Tudyuk droid. The one, the droid one. Um. <laughs> that one. Who's a good? He's a good droid, Bront. <laughs> All I want is Top Gun, but with Tie Fighters. See, I would watch that. Sort of what I was hoping Rogue uh, Rogue Squadron was gonna be, but I just know that if that movie does ever come out. They'll find a way to push me away, because that's what they do. But I just want to see... I just want to see...
TIE fighter pilots shirtless playing volleyball. Like, that's really what it comes down to. Step into the danger zone. All right, I should thank Norscan. Norscan, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the channel. It's going to be about Harrison Dula and a DH Luke Skywalker, and you know I'm right, Sam Walk says. I know you're right. I know you're right. <laughs> Sandai keeps making the argument in chat that, but counterpoint, laser sword's cool. And I've had this chat with you before, chat. I've had this conversation with you before. There's such a thing as too much cake. What makes cake delicious is that cake is a treat. <laughs> is Andi says false. No, is Andi, I proved conclusively in March of this year, after eating cake <laughs> for a week, that there is such a thing as too much cake. This reminds me, I have terrible news. Oh no, Meg has terrible news. Why do you have terrible news? Why would you bring me terrible news? So, cake reminds me of this because one of the reasons you had to eat that cake all by yourself was because I abandoned you for your birthday. Yes, are you going away on my birthday again? Are you leaving me here alone to fend for myself and with an entire plate of cake? Maybe. My work trip is not in February. It's being pushed back. Huh. I'm really sorry. Maybe it'll get pushed back to April. I'm the worst. This is the face of a man who has to eat cake for a week. Maybe we'll get a smaller cake. Maybe this time I'll just make myself a Boston cream pie. Okay. And buy an entire coconut <laughs> buttermilk cake. I'm gonna have cake for breakfast and dinner. I have two different kinds of cake. I can stream for 24 hours. That will numb the pain. Mmm. Different cake will make it easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's true. Any anyhow, there is such a thing as too much cake, and cake tastes good. But you can get sick of cake. It is possible to overdo it on cake, and so sometimes, sometimes you have to split the cake with other foods. Some meat and potatoes. The occasional broccoli. Makes the cake taste better. Eat one single vegetable. I'm begging you, Star Wars fandom. <laughs> vegetables do. Vegetables do also take good. Taste good, as does competent world building and satisfying story and then you can have laser swords as a treat <laughs> no is <laughs> and i know not laser swords all the time Karsma, apparently not li not having ever listened to anything I've ever said about Star Wars, says, I thought you want less world building, less exploration of the setting. No. No. <laughs> build out the setting. 
build out the world, expand the universe. Stop making the universe small. The universe is big. You do not have to go into intricate, minute, scientific detail on how every aspect of the universe works and interacts. But you should continue to grow the universe <laughs> and show us new things. No, world building, world, bu now I'm getting angry. World building is not going into minute scientific detail about every aspect and facet of everything. That is the opposite of world building. <laughs> that is, that is not world building. World building is about creating the impression that larger mysteries exist to be uncovered. And that there are things and societies and characters and people interacting outside our cone of vision. And we don't need to see outside that cone of vision. We just need, as the, the person viewing, to understand and believe that a world exists outside our cone of vision. That the, the world doesn't solely exist for the purpose of what we are looking at. <laughs> there we go. Make a Laron. There we go. Laron says, paint your entire canvas. Don't just keep adding detail to one man's face for 40 plus years. Like, yes. that we don't have to render every pixel with perfect detail we want to create an impression of a larger whole <laughs> orlandia is making a reference i don't i don't get saying that you heard it here folks matt demands the use on vong I have no idea what the use on Vong is, and I suspect I'm going to regret asking. <laughs> Ghost of Jeff Goldstone says, oh no, Matt, turn back. Flee, Matt, flee. This is not a place of honor. Uh-oh. What is it? Use on... Use on Vong. Wikipedia, let's find out more about the Yuzon Vong. Okay, they're already... The, the photo or the picture on Wikipedia is extremely edgelord, so that's a great start. The Yuzon Vong, also called the Chosen Race, known to the Chiss and Feronans sorry, Feroans, as the Far Outsiders, and sometimes incorrectly abbreviated to Vong, uh, which implied that one was disowned by their family and gods, were a nomadic extragalactic sentient species that nearly destroyed the New Republic and were responsible for the deaths of nearly 300 trillion sentient beings during their invasion of the galaxy. The Yuzon Vong and their uh, Chazrak slaves were among the few alien species known to originate outside the galaxy, the only known others being the Silentium and the Abominor. A typical Yuzon Vong resembled the human in form, though they were taller and heavier than the average human and had less hair on their heads. The Yuzon Vong were religious zealots who viewed mechanical technology as blasphemy. Their technological innovations were genetically engineered and purely organic. Additionally, the Yuzon Vongs deeply respected pain to the point of masochism and strove to improve their physical capabilities through organ grafting. Such grafting was a status symbol within Yuzon Vong society. Perhaps most notably, the Yuzon Vong were unable to be sensed through the Force. This confounded the Jedi who first encountered the Yuzan Vong. However, they were susceptible to some force-based attacks. Okay, so they're the Reavers. Yeah. 
they're just the Reavers. They're they're just the Reavers. They're they're the Reavers. Um, excellent. How do you do organ grafting without technology? Organic technology. But they're not just the Reavers. It's actually kind of the other kind of problem. What other kind of problem? Oh, incredible amounts of lore. Okay, so they're the, the Reavers taken to the, the lore-based extreme. See, I don't know. I'm, I'm, this is why I'm way too charitable towards Star Wars. I'm way too charitable towards Star Wars. Because I read a Wikipedia entry like that and I go, oh, they're the Reavers. The Reavers, which weren't explored and were a mysterious nebulous force on the fringes of the solar system that went mostly unexplored and only posed a nebulous threat in the world of, 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 uh, of Firefly up until Serenity, but Serenity only filled in the barest detail about the origins of the Reavers. So <laughs> I look at that and I'm like, oh, they're the Reavers. They're the, ne the nebulous ever-present threat, threat on the edge of the galaxy. But no, Sam Wonk is right. We know everything about them and how their societies work and how all their technology comes to be what their weaknesses are vis-a-vis -vis the force uh <laughs> so there we go they did like 20 books on 20 books this is why i say i'm way too charitable towards star wars Star Wars was a mistake. You know, you know what the you know what the mistake was? The mistake was not making a Star Wars movie for 25 years. That was the mistake. The mistake the mistake was not the creation of an EU. The mistake was that was the power vacuum that led to the EU being the only place Star Wars fans could go to get their Star Wars fix for the better part of three decades. Which canonized the EU in a way that EU material should not be canonized in any property. And became the expectation of Star Wars to the mainstream fan rather than the supplemental reading available <laughs> if you wanted to dive deep between films and led to a world where people are convinced Thrawn is great. Yeah, precisely. And a world where the only, the only, the only successful Star Wars film media able to exist now has to pay tribute to the EU in order to be given a blessing by the fans. <laughs> that was the mistake. You're only allowed to make Star Wars now credibly if you are a fan of the EU and you wear it on your sleeve. <laughs> the Warbo says, I still remember one time Cam tweeted, this is why the EU is decanonized and my first reading involved the Pope not liking the European, European Union. <laughs> oh, dear me. Sam Wong says, I think Mara Jade is probably the purest crystallization of Matt's objection, and you're probably right, except that I don't know anything about Mara Jade. Um, 
the the purest the purest crystallization crystallization of my exception and my objection that I have access to is the Last Jedi. Right, like Luke's characterization in the Last Jedi flows directly from his characterization in the original trilogy. And per his characterization in the original trilogy, his actualization at the end of that film is is essentially the most perfect like endpoint for his character. And the fans of Star Wars hated it. <laughs> because he wasn't a badass enough. So that's that's what I like that's all I can that's my touch point, right? That's that's all I can grab onto. But I I'm sure I'm I'm sure that uh that Mara Jade is very bad. I don't doubt it. <laughs> Last Jedi is crazy milkman? Yes, that's correct. And the fans hated it, could sum up every Star Wars property since 1984, except The Mandalorian, apparently. Everybody loves The Mandalorian, myself included. I just want it to stop getting up its own butt. Tell me stories about The Mandalorian and his sidekick wandering the fringes of the universe and not dealing with the Jedi even a little bit. Just raise baby Yoda to be a bounty hunter. Like, come on. <laughs> there are so many fun ways that series could have gone. Um, <laughs> baby Yoda does a genocide. He still might. We don't know that he's going to end up good. Oh, Laron, you should watch The Mandalorian. As much as as much as I'm being a cranky old man about it, The Mandalorian is very good. It is quite enjoyable for the most part. Sam Wonk was right when he said that the second season is basically all stealth pilots for spin-off series. Uh not that stealth. <laughs> it is basically just every episode is a pilot for a spin-off series, but but the show still manages to be like fun and entertaining but yes at two wiggins <laughs> it's it it's a good show i won't obviously i cannot force you to make it or to watch it you won't watch it if you don't want to but i will as a person who evidently is critical of star wars it is it is a show that i continue to enjoy and uh and that I would recommend to others. I would evangelize positively ab about The Mandalorian for the most part. It's on my mind because when my parents were here over the holidays, we watched, like, all of season two of The Mandalorian. Um, the reason we watched all of season two of The Mandalorian is that the last time we were able to have Christmas together in 2019, I guess, I showed, I showed my parents the first season of The Mandalorian because it was available at the time. Just after, this was like just after the, the Mandalorian had come out. I don't remember when it was exactly, but just after the first season of The Mandalorian had ended, we visited with my parents, and I showed it to my parents, and my mom fell in love with it. And so when they came to visit, they, and my mom doesn't have Disney Plus, and doesn't have access to Disney Plus. So when they came to visit, my mom was like, can we, can we watch the second season of The Mandalorian? I have to know what happens. And so we watched the second season of The Mandalorian. And, uh, anyhow, my parents, my, my parents like The Mandalorian. And, uh, that is, that is, of course, put my, my mind, my mind in the place where The Mandalorian lives. Give my mom the password. It's not that my mom doesn't have the password. Um, it is that my mom doesn't have a device on which to play it. <clears throat> I have to keep my parents off streaming if for no other reason than I'll have nowhere to put my extra Blu-rays. You're not wrong. 
but no, my, um, my, like, our Christmas present to my mom this year was an Apple TV, like, the brick, an Apple TV brick, and, uh, paired with that, my mom already has a Netflix subscription, but, uh, paired with that, we gave them, um, a year of Crave, a year of Amazon Prime, and a year of Disney Plus, and a year of Apple TV. So, once they once they get the Apple TV brick set up and connected to their television, um, yes, they can stream from a computer, but my parents are not going to do that, and they don't know their 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 parents, <laughs> their parents. They don't know what to do. They don't know to like set up their laptop on a TV anytime they want to watch a thing and they don't know how to make it work the way they want to make it work so <laughs> playing on a laptop is no good and they have a smart tv but the smart tv they have is only capable of doing netflix so they, like it doesn't have the other apps so anyway i got them the apple tv and we got them or rather i gave them my old apple tv the the apple tv wasn't really the the present the present was the year of subscription service uh it's a very old smart tv it 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 predates all the various streaming apps which is why it it doesn't have the streaming apps on it but uh but anyhow we i gave them the apple tv we'll hook them up with all the streaming services and then they only just have to set it up one time and connect one account to it <laughs> one itunes account to it and they will have Netflix and Crave and Disney Plus and Apple TV Plus and Amazon Prime and access to the iTunes movie store so that they can buy and rent movies and they like they will be set. They don't have to worry about it. But right now trying to figure out how to get Disney Plus my mom trying to figure out how to get Disney Plus was too much. She didn't understand. So or she couldn't figure out a good convenient way to do it. And uh, her desire to watch Disney Plus was not so high that learning how to hook up a laptop to the TV seemed like a reasonable thing to do. So that's... that's why. Are my parents on Twitch watching me? Definitely not. They do understand what streaming is. So they, they get it. They know what I'm doing. When I tell them that I'm streaming on Twitch, they understand what I'm doing. I've streamed from my parents' house in the past, so they they know what they're doing. But but that's that's all good. Um, anyhow, the reason that I don't need my Apple TV anymore is that my TV, my smart TV, is now sufficiently smart and uh, and does indeed have access to all the streaming apps natively. So my TV natively has. Netflix, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, Crave. Crave was the holdout. Crave was the one that uh, was the slowest to come to be. So I, uh, I, I was like waiting and waiting and waiting. We had the Apple TV just for Crave because it wouldn't come to the television. And then earlier this year, they released Crave. Last year. Was it last year? Yeah, it's a new year. Oh. When I say earlier this year, I mean within the last 12 months. Yes, you're right. So anyhow, within the last 12 months, Crave TV released for my TV. And, uh, and so... The thing, I have all the apps on my TV now and I didn't need the Apple TV anymore. And then, and then like, in, in the last three months, they have additionally put TikTok on my television. Yes, Crave had to fix the subtitles for a while because. The yes, there was that. So, anyhow, my TV has all the apps. I don't know why it has all the apps, but it has all the apps. It has it has TikTok, it has Twitch, it has Plex, it has Spotify, it has Apple Music. But if you ever wanted to watch TikTok videos on your television, 
you have an LG TV, you can do that now. For some reason. No, it doesn't... You don't put, put TikToks on TikTok from a TV. You watch TikToks on TikTok from a TV. The TikTok app is on there, but you're not, like, uploading TikToks that way. <laughs> I don't need to see TikToks bigger. You're right. And there's still vertical video, right? Like, it doesn't expand them out to fill the screen. So you've just got all this wasted space on either side. It's not, it's not the ideal <laughs> TikTok viewing experience, I gotta say. Is there such a thing as an ideal TikTok viewing experience? I'm not so sure. Would it be better if they did stretch it? I, I want there to be a stretch function in the app. I want to be able to watch wide TikTok. It doesn't have to be the default, but I want to be able to watch wide TikTok. Let me make TikTok thick. Can you imagine all the dancing TikToks at 16 by 9, stretched to 16 by 9? Thick chonk. There is an ideal TikTok viewing experience. The first step involves closing TikTok. I don't know. There's some funny stuff on TikTok. There, there, is, there is funny content on TikTok. It's just a matter of finding it. I don't find that the tic I don't know. Most people are like, let the TikTok algorithm do its thing. But I don't find the TikTok algorithm to be particularly successful in my case. It serves me a lot of stuff I don't want to watch. Cat says, TikTok is great. If you don't think it's great, you're on straight TikTok. I mean, you're not wrong. I don't know. I just, I, I just want the TikTok algorithm to so serve me only good content. And it doesn't do that. And I, I think it's partly because I... When is the Wiggins TikTok going up? Technically, I already have one. I do have an account. Uh, I've made one video which I deleted. But I have been thinking about doing like a clip talk for this channel. But yes, re really the, uh, the best way to watch TikTok is with vi videos your friends send you or compilations on YouTube because that's how you get served only the good content. But... Uh, but my, my problem with TikTok is that it counts watching an entire video. Like, the, the algorithm counts watching an entire TikTok video as, as engagement, as does it count, like, liking or commenting on a video. Um, but my problem is that I have a tendency to, like, I, I give every TikTok a chance. So I rarely actually scroll away from a video before it's over, even if I don't like it. I, I reserve judgment until the end of the video because I'm like, this could go somewhere funny, and then it doesn't. And then I'm like, ah, oh, crap, all right, we'll scroll on. And then it's like, oh, you liked that. You watched the whole thing. We're going to serve you more of that content. <laughs> I'm like, no, algorithm, please do not. I only watched it so that I could decide if I liked it or not. I didn't watch it because it was good. Dang, I did make it to an hour. How did I make it to an hour? Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars, that's uh that's what did it. Too many shirtless tie pilots. See, I think that would make for good TikTok content. I'm giving you this idea for free. 
if you are sufficiently attractive and you have a co-creator who is also sufficiently attractive and you have a pair of TIE Fighter helmets <laughs> and, and you want to recreate the sexually charged scenes from Top Gun as scantily clad TIE Fighter pilots, we're talking like 16 million views a video easy. Guaranteed. I promise you now, that will go triple viral. <laughs> Do it one minute at a time. How long is Top Gun? What's the runtime? It's 110 minutes long. So if you, if you start now, that's 110 TikTok videos. That's six months of content, uploading one a day. Four months of content, uploading one a day. You will be the hottest new thing on TikTok by the end of that four months, guaranteed. You have my word. Oh, there are definitely scantily clad TIE pilots on the internet. I... I can confirm that, but they aren't reenacting Top Gun. <laughs> Anyhow, as I said, I'm giving you this for free. The, uh, <laughs> this is your ticket to TikTok stardom. But what if I don't want there to exist attractive, scantily clad, fascist foot soldier content? Well, I got bad news for you. A, they're pilots, not foot soldiers. And B, you're way too late to stop that train from rolling. All right, I gotta I gotta hold on here for another two minutes. We're at we're at fifty seven minutes fifty two seconds. Lysander says I once stumbled upon a, upon a TikTok of a silent Halo Spartan cosplayer giving life affirming speeches. I I've seen that guy. I've I've seen that TikTok channel. Traditions would probably take those two minutes. You're right. You're right, they would. Uh, uh oh. What? Oh, they were giving they're giving the speeches with cat with closed captions, right. Which reminds me, captions was something I meant to turn on this stream and forgot to do it today. So I'll have to remember to do that tomorrow. I would like to add captions to this stream automatically generated, but I would like to add captioning to the stream just as a simple accessibility feature. And I've forgotten to do it repeatedly, so I should get on with that. Anyhow, there, there's, there's a handful of good content on, on, on TikTok. One, one of my favorite creators, who I don't think I actually followed. I should go and follow him. I don't even know his username. But uh he does he does Marvel TikToks. And as long as you don't as long as you pay no attention to commentary on the films or film reviews. Do not go on con do not go on TikTok for Star Wars content if you want to remain sane. Uh or for Marvel content if you don't want to be angry if you're me. But uh but his standard, his bit, the bit that he did that made him famous is uh, characters from the 616 universe meeting their counterparts from the MCU 
and he just stages a conversation between the MCU and the 616, the 616 counterpart. And they're generally pretty funny. And they 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 demonstrate a remarkable amount of uh, of comics knowledge. <laughs> I I assume he doesn't just know it off the top of his head, which is a bad assumption. But uh, I assume he does his research for each video. Uh, but they're funny. Like it's good. It's a good bit. That's a good bit. And uh, and so like that content gives a thumb. I give it a thumbs up. <clears throat> A format restricted to ultra short takes attracts people who don't have any worthwhile analysis to offer. Who could have thought? Uh, Horus Five says, "Have they not given the MCU a number yet?" No, they have, but it's been retconned twice, I think. So it was originally Earth one nine 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 nine. I think the M the MCU is Earth Earth one nine 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 nine. I think, and then and then Spider Man Far From Home kind of kind of retconned it. It wasn't so much that they retconned it on purpose as it just kind of happened and got confusing, and they haven't clarified. This is as like lore nerdy as I I intend to get here, but but what happened is that when Far From Home came out in that movie mysterio tells spider-man that he is from this like he is from an alternate universe and that the earth that they are on is earth 616 so in the mcu they know their earth so so yes but mysterio is also lying you are correct spoilers Far From Home is, like, four years old. Um, and I haven't spoiled the way that movie goes. But anyhow, it is true. You are correct, chat, that it turns out that Mysterio is unreliable. And consequently, whether or not the Earth is 616 in the MCU is as of as of far from home unknown right we we don't actually know how credible what mysterio told us was but now we know that a multiverse does exist <laughs> far from home was the first movie in which the multiverse was the concept of the multiverse was introduced to the MCU and in that movie they identified Earth as Earth 616. Um, but now, since that movie, the multiverse has been demonstra demonstrably, like, shown to exist in the MCU. And since that multiverse has been proven to exist within the MCU, they have not given a designation to the Earth of the MCU. And so, by the extent to which I care... And the extent to which I have mentally explained this away, I'm trying very hard not to say my headcanon. Uh, but the way that I have mentally explained this is that the MCU takes place in universe 199999. But the in universe designation of 19999 is that they understand themselves to be Earth 616. However, the multiversal entities that oversee the multiverse would recognize them as having come from Earth-199999. Anyhow, <laughs> nobody cares, and uh, it doesn't matter. It's just one of those kind of nerd things. Um, it's also the case... It's also the case that in uh, Miles Morales, uh, Spider-Verse, into the Spider-Verse, I should say, uh, the Peter Parker who buys the farm, R.I. Peter, is, uh, is from 616, and Miles lives in 1610, which is not possible 
<laughs> because that continuity is clearly different from the ulti ultimate continuity. But, uh, but in that film, they specify that Miles' world is 1610, which is the ultimate universe. Sorry, maybe maybe I meant I I meant the other Peter. The the you're right. Miles's Peter is the one who dies. I I don't remember. It's been a while since I watched that movie. Anyhow, they got it. They got it wrong again. They they referenced people as being in the correct. Fat Pete is the one I think I was referring to as being from six one six. But sixteen ten in uh, is the universe that that takes place in because Miles comes from the Ultimate Universe. Um, Peter B. Parker, that's right. I should rewatch Into the Spider-Verse. I should always rewatch Into the Spider-Verse. That movie is one of the best movies ever. But uh But anyhow, again, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It's a cute little detail that they threw in so that fans would go, Oh! Look! They got the universal designation right. And then would leave the theater like me and think, wait, no, they didn't get the universal designation right. It's not possible for this movie to have taken place in that universe. Because that universe already has an established continuity, which this universe conflicts with. So remember, everybody... Being lore obsessed is bad, except when I do it. All right, let's move on to traditions. Here's my phone. Here's my phone cable. Everybody, please brace your ear holes. Lore, not even once. All right. What did the poll go to today? What did the poll go to today? <laughs> Sandai says, I think this has been the most lore, or quote, rich waffle yet. No, you just have to quote me more frequently. They They didn't forget the poll again. I know there was a poll. They forgot the bet. Again, but the poll happened. Izandai made a poll. Laron says Coke with a staggeringly decisive four votes. Oh, there was a bet. Oh, okay. There was a bet. The bet just happened before anybody got here. There were there were like six people who participated. All right, so the poll went to Coke. Did it go to Coke or did it go to Coke? <laughs> Don't unionize my mods. <laughs> Our relationship is sufficiently adversarial already. All right, so it was real Coke. <laughs> All right, were you correct this evening? I'm afraid that's legitimate Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Delicious and nutritious. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Put it in your mouth. And swallow.
Right. So I I was privy to this drama, Sam Wonk. Sam so Sam Wonk raised today's drama. I I'm, I'm going to comment on it cuz I I was aware of this. I had uh, I had seen it. Uh whereas uh the drama today is that Jon Stewart pointed out that the depictions of goblins in Harry Potter is shot through with anti-Semitic stereotypes, and the discourse once again immediately lost all sense of, per of perspective, which is true. Uh, I I heard of this by way of Jon Stewart responding to the discourse um, because he was on a podcast responding to the discourse, and... Uh, <laughs> And his, his, like, his comment was just like, we were just having a conversation about some of the, like, we were just, we were just joking around about some of the tropes used in Harry Potter. It was a good-natured discussion. I did not accuse anybody of anything. <laughs> I, I did not call the Harry Potters anti-Semitic. I said that they had some unfortunate depictions Please, Newsweek, specifically he called out Newsweek. Please, Newsweek, stop doing this. <laughs> so that, that was, that was what the, that was what the, the whole shebang was about is Jon Stewart was on a podcast a month ago and made some comments about the goblins in Harry Potter and then Newsweek, and then a bunch of other websites picked it up and were like, John Stewart accuses J.K. Rowling of anti-Semitism. And then he actually, yeah, it was a month ago. And, and then it hit, it went viral today. And uh, so then John Stewart today was like, I didn't accuse anybody of anything. It wasn't directed at J.K. Rowling. It, it wasn't. It was just a, a conversation had between two friends in a public forum about the Harry Potter movies, which I enjoy. <laughs> and I just thought I made some observations about depictions of the goblins in that film. <laughs> please, please don't make everything into a flame war. Please. So that was today's drama. Yeah, there you go. You can like a piece of media and be, still be critical. In fact, it's encouraged. That's why I spent an hour talking about Star Wars today. All right, let's move on. <laughs> I promised some dragons were getting fought. So let's move on to dragons. And fighting them. And the fighting thereof. How to fight your dragon. Oh, why didn't I name the stream that? No. I have to live with the stream title as is. Crunch. The stream title reflects the waffling? Okay. All right, here we go. It's music time. Everybody settle in.
All right, here we go. <clears throat> Okay, I have it on good authority. Um, this this guide being good authority that the next dragon should take us less time. Uh, who was the Sam Raimi Gwen Stacy? It was um, Howard. Uh, what's her name? Ron Howard's daughter, who now directs Star Wars shows. Um. Why can I not think of her name? The one that looks like Jessica Chastain, but younger. Bryce Dallas Howard. That's right. Okay, and I think I stand here and use the, the horn to get out of here, right? And Felicity, whatever her name is, played Felicia Hardy in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. That much I remember. The sky above Hydra Marshes. Felicity Jones? Is that her name? Yes, that's right. Jin Urso. You used up the ancient fruit. I don't know. I saw reported somewhere that Sony is, like, currently trying to develop both a Black Cat TV series with Felicity Jones and a Spider-Gwen movie with Emma Stone. But I don't, I don't think either of those have legs. As much as I'd go see, frankly, either one of them, uh, because I'm helpless. But Sony just needs Spider-Man. They need new ideas is the problem. They need new ideas. Can I help you? I am playing my game now. I'm just also talking. You can talk and play games at the same time? No. <laughs> Clearly not. Like, stop whining about Star Wars already. I mean, stop elucidating. <laughs> Meg's trying to be supportive and not doing an incredible job of it. Uh... <laughs> All right, I think we're headed for the boat. We are on Homeworld, so that's where that's where we want to be. We want to be on Homeworld. We're aboard the boat. <laughs> Finger on the monkey's paw curls, Sony announces a script based on one more day. Literally, we just had that! <laughs> Allied Man, thank you for the resub. Now for 18 months. Allied Man says, what is up, party people in the place? How, uh, place to be. How is Dragon Quest 2022 going? Uh, we just started. We just started. <laughs> You've missed nothing. We have not killed a single dragon yet. Back up, back up, nope. So first, I should check something. How did I talk for an hour 30? The answer is Star Wars. Easy answer, Star Wars. Ha 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 
Uh, man just says, oh no, in chat. <laughs> Revenge shifts your status effects onto the enemy. Huh. <laughs> I d Perhaps I do remember when you said I should start a podcast, and also I still think that's a bad idea. How do you still not have a level 7? Good lord. All right, so here we are, Earth Dragon Isle. God, I could get so many hate follows. I don't want hate follows though. I want people to follow me because my opinions are good, because my opinions are good. Hate follows are what feed TikTok. You're right. But I don't need that on my life. All right, so uh, we need to go to the north area. Step on the quicksand. There we go. Let's talk to this nerd. Hey, nerd. Oh, I hate having to go through the quicksand to get here. Every time you go down, you get sand in your mouth. I hate sand. It's rough and it's coarse and it gets everywhere. down, yes. Gotta get down to get up. Wee. Okay, this time we're doing the same thing, but we're going left instead of right. To the left, to the left. Open the box. Hey, a mithril. Nice. Uh-oh. This seems potentially problematic. Hey, friendo. Oh, you see that monster over there sitting as still as a rock? It's called a rock roach. It won't attack you as long as you don't approach it. It's pretty much harmless. But I tell you, that thing must weigh a ton. Our explosives have just barely enough power to blow it away. By the way, I was the one who blasted that one, and it was actually my special explosives that did the trick. Why don't you, uh, why don't I give you some of my explosives? They really pack a punch. I'm sure they're, they'll come in handy. Uh, sure, I will take some. Oh, there's one thing I have to warn you about. You can only blast the ones that are just sitting there. Not any that are moving about or coming towards you to attack. But hey, I guarantee you'll have a blast with these. <laughs> oh, and stay clear of the shockwaves from the blast. 
Here you go. Put them to good use. All right, we got our explosives. All right, so we got the explosives. Continue to the next screen. Open this chest. Alright, so here you'll see three rock roaches, and your goal is to use them to block three of the sand boils to make one powerful sand boil that will propel you up the to the exit. So, first things first. Hello, rock roach. Let's blow you up. Explosive. <laughs> Run away! <laughs> Alright. One dealt with. Listen, I'm not gonna sit here and debate the ethics of blowing up a rock roaches. The game gave me explosives and told me to blow up the rock roaches. That's what I'm here to do. That didn't work. Okay. Uh, fight it once it's close to the ledge. Oh, okay. I have to fight this one. Ah! Wait, there's clearly two of them. And they have a friend. This isn't fair. I was promised only one rock roach. Horus 5, is it fauna? If it's a rock, maybe it's a sentient rock, but it's still a rock. What is the nature of fauna, exactly? Doing animal, vegetable, mineral, not flora, fauna. I'm unclear. I'm asking you. Uh, that was an attack, all right. These guys are probably yellow innate, so this is probably not going to be a tremendously effective attack. Indeed, it was not a tremendously effective attack. That was, though. Go to sleep. those. Looks like you can push it down. Heave ho! Alrighty, that's two down, and zero two has requested a joke. So let's find a joke.
So, Meg and I had a fight. Meg told me I had to stop doing my fl flamingo impersonation once and for all. And at that point, I had to put my foot down. Now we have to go deal with this one. Uh, the one on ground level is just fight it and then push it towards the hole, it says. But it's not moving. I should be able to explode this one into the hole. But I can't, so let's fight it. Cast Feral Cats. Yes, that worked well. Very nice. Sure, let's use cannonballs. How is the SS Invincible shooting cannons into this cave? Great question. Who's the Tom Selleck looking dude? That's Fargo! The pirate captain Fargo. Unless you're thinking of a very different Tom Selleck than I am. Push it. Push it real good. Beauty. We got ourselves a sand boil, friends. Hop on in. Whee. Hey, a save point. That's conveniently located. Well, no one here. I guess we'll have to go. Her! It looks like it's a dead end. Could this just be a natural cavern of some sort? It does not seem like a ruin. There's no point staying here. There's absolutely nothing. Thou who is bound by fate, what powers doth thou seeketh?
Yeah, that's about how I'd react. Oh, wow, I picked a pretty good voice for this one. The time has come. My power shall grant, I shall grant to the ones who seek to break the eternal chains of fate. What is it thou seeketh? I seek the dragon god's blessing. Dost thou need the powers of the sleeping dragons to cross the Dead Sea? Dost thou seekest to break the chains of fate? A son of man to challenge the goddess of fate? Fascinating. Then confront my trials. Erg. I don't want to fight you. I just want your blessing. All right. One, two, three. And everybody cross your fingers. Yes! Got it in one! We're two for two. Stop beating on my dudes, jeez. Let's try this. A level seven technique. <laughs> really? That's it? This thing is yellow innate, so a yellow ability is not going to do a whole heck of a lot. Oh, it healed it. Well, that's awkward. I mean, that is definitely a kind of not doing a lot. Why do I have Leon from Resident Evil on my team? Because I don't have anybody better at the moment. Norris doesn't suck. Except that I probably should have brought somebody green and eight with me. Okay, let's not use a yellow ability. 
That's a bad idea. Listen, when you're playing through this game, you can use the cave girl with the battle axe if you want to. Okay, good. That was a lot of attacks. That's right, dragon. Talk shit, get hit. Thunder snake. <laughs> Thunder. Well done, son of man. Thy strength is worthy of my powers. Take with thee my prayers. Lynx has been bestowed with the yellow relic. I too shall watch over thy fate, how thou struggle to live, and how thou face death. All right. Thanks, bud. <laughs> Incredulous passerby says, so I've been in and out over the last while and I've only caught a few partial streams. Are those flashing lights something I can figure out or do I just watch the flashing lights at this point? <laughs> what flashing lights? Or are you just talking about it's a flurry of VFX and numbers and I either win or lose? Because the battle system is quite straightforward. So if you're struggling to figure out the battle system, we I can walk you through it. Okay, now the real question of our age is how do I get out of here? We made it up, but how are we supposed to get- wait. We made it up, but how are we supposed to get back down? Okay, so Incredulous Passerby says, There are so many flashing lights! Your character bar has green pyramids that flash! There's some field effect thing on the top left, and I did figure out the hit chance and element thing, I think. Okay. We can answer all these questions, so just hold tight until we get into a new battle. Uh, maybe if we just jump down like we did before. Maybe if we just jump down. Jump down, there we go. Oh, well, that was extremely convenient. Uh, no, I was on the ladder already. 
All right, well, this is an opportunity to walk you through the battle system. Yes. All right, so starting from the top left. Up in the top left, we have what is called the field effect window. Uh, this field effect window tells you basically the relative strength of different elements. So, if you cast three elements in a row between your characters of a single color, that will turn the entire field a single color. If the, the entire field is a single color, then elements of that color become incrementally stronger. So if, this, if the field effect were all blue, for instance, then blue elements would be stronger and red elements would be weaker. Additionally, in order to use a summon, you have to turn the field effect entirely the color of the summon. Uh, so that's that's the thing to note. It's like in order to cast a summon element, you have to turn the field effect the color of the summon before you can summon it. But yes, this game does have summons. So that's field effect. Second thing is the uh, the stamina. So each each round of combat, your character has seven points of stamina. And you can distribute that stamina between the three attack types. Uh, one point for a light attack, two points for a medium attack, three points for a heavy attack. You want to distribute them in a way that increases the hit percentage. So if I attack at one point, then I have a 94% chance to hit. If I attack at two points, I have an 82% chance to hit. If I have three points, I have a 72% chance to hit. But every hit I land increases the accuracy of the subsequent attack. So if I hit for one, now a level two attack hit has an 87% chance to hit, and a level three attack has a 78% chance to hit. So now I go two. Now I have 90% chance to hit on three. There we go. Uh, now, the blinking pyramid in my character's status bar indicates how many elements from my element grid I currently have access to. So, because I landed a level 1 hit and a level 2 hit, but not a level 3 hit, I have access to the same number of elements that I successfully landed hits on for stamina points. So. I used three stamina points to do hits that hit, and I used three stamina points on hits that did not connect. So I currently have a level three. I have access to up to my level three element grid. So that's what the blinking pyramid means. And as long as I have one stamina in reserve, I can use an element. So I could use any of the first three rows of my elements right now. I'm not gonna do that because I want to continue to level up my grid. So I hit with that last point of stamina. That raised my element grid up to level four. One, oh. And then I got interrupted. So that's basically all there is to know. Oh, that thing's gonna blow up. Don't like that. You know what? Let's iceberg this guy. All right, so the other thing to know is that as long as you have one stamina point left in your bar, you can cast an element. Um, if you cast an element, it costs seven stamina no matter what. So you can see with Fargo, I just cast Iceberg. He is now out of stamina and in a debt of six stamina in his stamina bar. He will get one point of stamina back for every point of stamina used by another member of the party. So if, par if Norris uses seven stamina on this turn, Fargo will get seven stamina back. And then if Lynx uses seven stamina in a turn, Fargo will get seven stamina back. And that will bring him 
back to full seven stamina, ready to go for his next turn. And that's just how the turn order is decided. Um, you can interrupt by doing a turn early, but you'll have less stamina to work with. And in order, in order to make best use of the battle system, you use six stamina on physical attacks, then one stamina on an element, and then both of your other characters go and have their turn before you come back to that first character. Because that way, you're always rotating through the character that has full stamina in their, in their reserve. And elements are finite, so you cannot use a spell until you unlock that level of the grid. And you can only use any given element one time in a given battle. So once you once you use an element in a fight, you can't use it again. Oh crap. And by element I mean spell, yes. Spells in this game are called elements. That's just what they're named. It's a little weird. Yeah, it's a little weird because a spell in this game is called an element. And an element has an innate color... And in normal circumstances, we would typically refer to, like, the innate component of a spell as its element, right? Like, if you cast Thunder, that's Lightning Elemental. That's not how this works. <laughs> Yellow spells can be either Electric or Earth-based, for instance. But, sorry, Yellow Elements can be Earth or Lightning-based. Blue elements can be ice or water based. Because it's the it it is the color that is the innate property, and the element is just what the item is called. Also, incredulous passerby, thank you for the sub. I am speaking gibberish. You know, this only makes sense if you've been following along. But that's the best I can do for helping you out. It is a little convoluted. But anyhow, we're done here. We can move on. So this time, where are we headed? Still homeworld. We are going to Water Dragon Isle. Who could have guessed that that's where we would find the Water Dragon? Which one's Water Dragon Isle? Not this way. That's Sky Dragon Isle. Yeah. Water Dragon Isle. All right. There we go. There's a bonus for color matching? Sort of. So, uh, if you use a blue element, like if a character who's blue and eight uses a blue element, they get a bonus. If they use it against a character who's red elemental, like the opposed element, there's bonus damage applied there. If you use a blue element while the field is blue, you get a bonus there. Stuff like that. There's like a whole mechanical sublayer in there. I'll write this.
All right, everybody hop on. Uh-oh, we got a joke request. How do you steal somebody's coat? Your jacket. Okay. Now where do I go? Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. That's why. What headphones do I use? I am using the Steel Series Arctis 7. And they are pretty comfy. It's true. These were my birthday present in 2020, the day before the pandemic started. Well, the day before everything shut down because the pandemic started. These are my pandemic headphones. So, we got the ice breath. Go through the exit here. I don't know where the exit here is. Probably up this way. Ah, yes. Beat the side steps, it says. I don't think these are they. What type of creature are you? Right, you're a Lagoonite. You know, I don't think I care about doing this fight. Oh, I should care about doing this fight. Because we gained a star level, so I should maximize my stat gain. I don't really want to maximize my stat gain. Maybe I don't. Maybe we just, maybe we just play this game on hard mode. And don't grind. I know, Laron, more of it, but what about less of it? I know, that's, that's a pretty harsh betrayal, I realize. Wait, hold on. Hold up! We've got a blue field. Let's use it. That was remarkably effective considering it was blue.
Also, why is my why is my star level 30 of 32? I haven't figured that out. That's that's confusing to me. Why why is it 30 of 32? It costs a star level to summon. Permanently? What does that mean? How do I get it back? Or does it reset when I gain my next star level? This is a mechanic I was not even aware of. Star level chrono cross. Oh, it's snowing. Should I come and have a look? It's just snowing a little. It's not very good snow. Okay. It's legally snowing. Legally snowing. All right. Okay, I'm trying to... Star level Chrono Cross summon. 13, there we go. What does it mean if it says, I have 13 out of 14 stars? The right hand number is how many star levels you've gained. The left hand number is how often you can use summon elements before you have to rest again. Huh. All right. There we go. Whoops. So where am I actually going? What is my destination here? Is it under the... No. It seems like it should be down there, doesn't it? Ah, uh, yes. Save. What the hell are those things? I guess those are the things regard to re are referred to as sidesteps by the guide. Just straight up. What are those? Yeah, Alaskan king crabs is right. I'm hungry. I have no good reason to be hungry. Yes, that is an element called feral cats and it does do exactly what it says on the tin. Someone says, you know what's good when you're hungry after dinner? Cake. You're right. 
cake would be good. I bought myself a donut today. That was my treat. I had I had a donut today. And a donut is like a little mini cake. A little ring-shaped cake. It's just enough cake. It's not too much cake. It's just enough cake. A donut is just the right amount of cake. I had a long john. I brought Meg a raspberry-filled donut, but I had a long john. Maple bar for those from other parts of the country? No, chocolate bar. A maple bar is a maple bar. A long john is a chocolate bar. Also, Azure Heights, responding to the comment that most people eat more than one donut with donuts Georg is an outlier and should not have been counted that is the joke of the night that's very good I did not have a chocolate long john a long john is a chocolate coated donut a maple bar is something else a long john is a bar donut with chocolate topping that's what a long john is it's like an eclair with no cream in the middle. So in no way like an eclair then, yes, that's right. Google images of Long John, you get 50% donuts and 50% crotch shots, Meg says. Oh no. Time for a risky oh, click. Yes. It is like the most comical. No, you have to remove the S. Oh, you have remove to remove the, the S. S, okay. That's Long John. Wow. Why? Alright, I, I am Isn't actually... Because it's maple frosting. They their their reference image of a long john has maple frosting on Wikipedia, which is not correct. False. The long john is a bar-shaped yeast risen pastry like a donut, either coated entirely with glaze or top coated with cake icing. They may be filled with custard or cream. The term Long John is used in the Midwestern U.S. and Canada and has been used in Texas. In other parts of the United States, such as the Mid-Atlantic, Mid Long Johns are sometimes marketed as eclairs. The two pastries look similar but are created with different types of dough, whereas, in, whereas eclairs are made with steam-puffed versus yeast-risen dough, and sometimes different fillings. The eclair may ha may have chibost cream. The eclair has usually chocolate fondant icing. On the American West Coast, long johns are called bars or bar donuts, such as the maple bar and the chocolate bar, depending on the frosting. Filled long johns are called filled bars or filled bar donuts. For example, an unfilled or even custard-filled long john with maple-flavored icing is called a maple bar in California. They may also be topped with chopped bacon and called a maple bacon bar. Some parts of the American Midwest also call this type of pastry a cream stick when filled.
Well, we all know Wikipedia is not a reliable source of information. The overwhelming majority of Long John photos on Google Image Search are chocolate topped, and so I'm I am considering myself vindicated in that regard. This, however, villagebakeshop.ca GTFO. That is a chocolate eclair, not a chocolate long john. You are lying to us. And yes, there are a lot of crotch shots on this page as well. Just an uncountable number of dong shots. No pirates, though. Samox says, also, I'm setting it down for the night, but S Cyberpunk 2077 is starting to look headed for a 6 out of 10, maybe even a 7 out of 10 territory. How did it manage to turn around so much in your estimation? I did pause in the middle of an explicit sex scene starring Keanu Reeves during the waffle, though. All right. Surge! The water dragon's just beyond here. I just want to know how it managed to win Sam Wonk over. This is the, the content I crave. Yes, there is a hole in that waterfall. I went into it already. We've been in there. <laughs> That's the best review of a game I've ever seen. The game badly needs the entire open world stripped out of it. Like, a mod that just teleported you from one main quest to the next would be the best mod ever made. Wow. How talk, let me talk to you. There we go. I just had to find the single pixel. I need to come up with a voice for this one. The time has come my powers I shall grant to the ones who seek to break the eternal chains of fate. What is it thou seeketh? The dragon god's blessing. Dost thou need the powers of the sleeping dragons to cross the dead sea? Dost thou seeketh to break the chains of fate? A son of man to challenge the goddess of fate? Fascinating. Then confront my trials. Boss Nass. I already sort of did a Boss Nass. Alright, here we go. Can we go three for three? Got 
thunderstorm. All right, do it to it. Tsunami beam. Don't like the sound of that. Oh. Flu? We got the flu? balls oh no this is gonna heal it I I shot it to health Cannonball's well-known munition. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's just like uh, what's her name from from uh, Overwatch, right? The healing sniper, healing sniper grandma. Anna, that's right. Okay, this time without casting something that will heal it. I see. Oh no. Oh, hey, everybody's stamina reset. That was nice. I think we just got four skipped a turn, but everybody's stamina reset, so I'll take it. Fuel, thank you for the gift subs. Uh, Solid Fuel has gifted 10 subs. Thank you, Solid Fuel. Uh, congratulations to Goombalax, Offered Leak, Uzumaki15, Hubaris, Brat the Worst, Mirmir009, Nazti Man, Dog of Myth, Orcsawan, and Bacon Pancake83. Thank you very much, Solid Fuel. Blue Whale. I'm curious to see what the Blue Whale summon does. Well done, son of, ma son of man. Thy strength is worthy of my powers. Take with thee my prayers. Cat Foo 123 says, Matt Wiggins, welcome to Milltown. Population, all of your cards. Why are all of my cards getting milled? 
I too shall watch over thy fate, how thou struggle to live, and how thou face death. Oh, we got another joke redeemed, did we? Let me see. A man walks into a library and says to the librarian, I'd like a ham sandwich with pickle and mayo. The librarian scolds him and says, Sir, this is a library. The man looks around apologetically uh, and to the other patrons and then leans in close to the librarian and whispers, Sorry, I'd like a ham sandwich with pickle and mayo. Wait, I missed a flu. How did all three of them... How did all three of us have the flu? Oh, we're still... <laughs> Thank you. You're on, Booth, you ding-dong. Have we killed dragons? No, the dragons have all survived. So far. Orbo, that's the worst thing I've ever heard. Why would you say that? I absolutely would not like the video. Under no circumstances should you post a link to the video. I like mayo. But I don't want to see that. One of the game announcers dipped an Oreo in mayo and ate them. So I've heard rumor that Oreos, Oreos with mustard are good. I've heard a rumor that Oreos with mustard are good. I don't believe the rumor, but I've heard the rumor. It doesn't sound right. It sounds awful. Did I go to the wrong place? I did go to the wrong place. Always take the right lily pads. Samwong says, the carrot cake Oreos really burned Oreos right out of me. So it's interesting. The Oreos in the U.S. are slightly, like, just 
ever so slightly different from Oreos in Canada, and I cannot describe why. I cannot describe why at all. But Canadian Oreos are way better than American Oreos. Uh, but we don't get as many weird flavors. But I think I had the I think I had the uh, the carrot cake ones too, and they were not good. Would not recommend. Okay, so this time we have to head to home. No, another world. We're heading to another world. The uh, the difference is actually the the like the texture of the of the frosting is a little different in uh, in Canadian Oreos. It's not that they have more frosting or are less sweet. Well, they I think they are less sweet, but the the frosting is firmer in Canadian Oreos. It's not quite as soft. <laughs> I do assume that it has something to do with, like, America's... American Oreos uh, use, like, some preservative that's illegal in Canada. But but the U.S. frosting is gross. The cookies are fundamentally identical, but the frosting in American Oreos is just disgusting. I, ca I can't eat American Oreos. They just make me gag. And yet, Kinder Eggs are not allowed in the U.S. Well, that's because... <laughs> that's because you'd think children are going to choke themselves. Canadian Oreos are made with coconut oil. Okay. I could see that. Oreos here are vegan? Really? Our Oreos are vegan? Alright, so where are we? Start by heading north at the first area. Oh god, leave me alone. No, no, no! <laughs> a product that is cruel to me, the consumer, and animal really be vegan. <laughs> That's a good joke, too. Chat, you're on fire tonight. You're keeping me well and truly entertained, and I appreciate it. Says, don't compliment us, Matt. We'll grow too powerful. No. No. You you can have little a big head as a treat. Why does Norris not have any health? I suppose we ran out of healing in that last fight. Honk? What was that for?
then east at the next exit. What? Oh, I'm stupid. This isn't Mount Pyre. This is Fossil Valley. I'm in the wrong place. No wonder I'm confused. Take exception to that, P. Johnson. This is a mountain, it's just the wrong mountain. And now I have to extricate myself. Terribly, terribly burned. Oh, god damn it. Oh, got there. I escaped! Alright, let's put a bomb. An ointment on that burn. And then go back to my boat? Yes, go back to my boat. This is Mount Pyre. All right, so from the first area we head north, it says. Oh God, oh God. Uh. Then in the next area we head east. Oh, leave me alone. No! Duck crap. <laughs> okay, this one says slide down the frozen lava. Go through this passage. Oh. I figured as much. How do I get up there? I can't freeze the lava because that will trap the box. Is this time shenanigans making the lava not hot? Well, the frozen lava was not hot. The lava I just walked through was definitely hot, and I probably burned myself on it. Oh, but only a little bit. It takes off something like, like 10 HP per second. Yes, frozen lava. You heard me. Frozen lava. Oh, this is going to get me super killed. I 
I do like to live dangerously. <laughs> Isn't frozen lava stone or obsidian? Well, that's solidified lava. But the, the lava here that's frozen is literally ice. It is not, perhaps, scientifically accurate lava. Okay, now I can freeze this lava. Where's my ice breath? Ice breath! Uh-oh. Ice breath! Uh-oh. <laughs> hmm. I'd like to file a bug report. I love these goofy-looking dogs. wave of stats. My level is maxed. A poultice cap. This was super not worth it, but... Alright, let's light myself on fire again. No, no! We're not dead, just badly, badly burned. As long as the enemies don't get to attack, everything's fine. <laughs> P. Johnston, thank you for the gift sub, and Hexy Lexi, congratulations on your, your newly found sub. You're right, I don't look that burned, and I'm less burned now. I didn't have to stand in the lava as long because we were going downhill as opposed to up. There we go. Now the lava's frozen. But impassable, so I did do it correctly. This should be more or less the home of the fire dragon. Okay, is there a save point? Show me a save point. Nope, no save point. Rip to me in particular. Where did his little buddy go? Ah, there he is. Hi, friendo. Can I interest you in a chat? How do I talk to you? 
Uh, hey, hey, lad, so we meet again. You look a bit different, but I know it's you. Come on, challenge me again, what do you say? <laughs> Put him up. Put him up. If you beat me, I'll give you the dragon relic and my pet salamander. All right, same as before. Uh-oh, I screwed this up. Run away! <laughs> this one's a little trickier, it turns out. Because this is a multi-phase fight. Aw, oh, you're no fun. Here, let's try that again. What? what? He despawned. Buddy. Here we go. <laughs> Do it right this time. Hi, little friend. All right, we want to use blue abilities. Of which I have precious few equipped to Lynx, which is a little bit troubling. I do have remarkably few equipped. Sploosh. Oh, here we go. Ah! Ah! Wowie wowie. <laughs> Somehow the party member with the bo most blue abilities is the guy that's yellow innate. Oh no. Oh, okay, everything's fine. Fargo's turn.
Holy moly. Alright, this is where things get dicey. Yes! Alright, everything's still good. The guide says it's quite easy to turn the entire field blue. I don't think that's the case. It counterattacks with red elements if you use blue ones. Okay. Ow. No, you know what? Norris. Fargo. No, <laughs> Fargo. Fargo, why? Down he goes. Down he goes? He did not go down. He's looking a little wounded though. So he might be close. Just dropping this winged creature out of the sky. There we go. That's the fight. We got Salamander. Excellent. Hmm, well, we'll meet again. 
Link's received the red relic. And burns! Horrible, horrible burns! Rude of them not to give me a save point here. Alright, well, at least these fights are easy, so we'll take advantage of- Really? Really, guys? Really? I was like, we'll take advantage of these easy fights and get the stat-ups from them. Oh no, three damage. Whatever will I do? I should figure out where I'm going next. The answer is Another World's Marbule is my next destination. That's just incredibly rude. There are still light and dark left, Orlantia. We still have the, the black dragon and the white dragon left to do. So we're headed to the black dragon next. dodged both of my first attacks. The thing really didn't want to get hit. Buddy, let's let's kill you too. So I think the black dragon has the most HP of any of the dragons that we've fought. Or will fight. I think it has the most HP of any dragon. Which is important to know for no particular reason. <laughs> How much more are we going to do tonight? Well, I suppose that depends on how long it takes. We've got an hour left in the stream. We have enough time to do both additional dragons tonight. Which is sort of my intent. Alright, onward. 
forward to Mar Beevil. Wait, that's the Isle of the Damned. Marbeul is over this way. Hello, Marbeul. We're gonna save right here. Ding. What? How do I get it? There we go. So what is special about the color plates that I keep pillaging? They are very important, or they will become very important a little later on. Um, but they they allow you to... They allow the, the wearer to absorb the equipped color. So they're not useful for us in this fight, but... Like, in these fights, because we're always fighting a character that is the same color as the element that the plate is. But, um, later on, equipping, equipping each of the characters, for instance, with the opposite plate from their innate color. So, like, giving Lynx the white plate, for instance, means that he now just absorbs damage when hit with white elements. And, uh, as opposed to taking bonus damage... <laughs> It hath been a long sleep, and I am still groggy. You shall provide some much-needed exercise. Roar! This one, I had, I had already done all the prerequisites for this one earlier on. So this one was, yeah, we just walk up to it. Yeah, this is a real dragon-looking dragon, isn't it? This is the one that we care about most, is the Black Plate. And we got it. Black Plate is going to be a real big deal for Surge later on. Anti-white? Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, it missed. Convenient. Dark Breath? Uh-oh. Nope, don't like that. Oh yeah, I suppose using a black element on the black dragon wasn't a wise choice. May not have been my... my smoothest decision. Uh, P. Johnson, I did play Final Fantasy X-2. You can find it in the VODs. The TLDR is that I didn't like it very much.
No, leave Nor- Ah, let him live! No, Final Fantasy XII is Star Wars. Final Fantasy X-2 is the the one with the the girl band dress fears. continue missing with anti-white. Ooh, critical hit. We like critical hits. Everybody says that 10-2 is a great battle system, but it truly does not. <laughs> There is very little that's salvageable in Final Fantasy X-2. Is Final Fantasy good more frequently than Star Wars? No. noticed a hole in my healing. Alright, heal yourself. What a dodge! Heal all, that's what I was looking for. Oh, that's why everybody's missing. Although that doesn't explain Fargo. Fargo doesn't have any... <laughs> Fargo's not afflicted with darkness. Fargo's just getting very unlucky. Incredulous Passerby, yes, this is definitely XCOM. And it has been XCOM basically the whole time. Okay, I'm just gonna hit him with level 1 attacks, or not. Ow. We can have some healing as a tree. Cannonballs!
All right, everybody's got their vision back, which is handy. Samwonk, you can't remember the basic concept of nine? Nine is my favorite one. Nine is the throwback. The very classic sort of steampunk fantasy one. The cartoony one, yeah. You got nothing. Well then. TD TLDR for for nine. Is the the whole like Kuja, a mysterious figure from another world, manipulates the Queen of Alexandria into starting a war building an army and starting a war so that he can take possession of all the summons and use them to destroy the world. That's the, the, the core, like, narrative. And then a bunch of other stuff happens along the way. Uh, I thank you for the excitement. Yes, nine is the one with Vivi. All right, that's our black dragon dealt with. So now we have a white dragon to deal with. <laughs> None of that story hit you at all? Nah, eh, well, such is life. should replay the Final Fantasies on stream. I thought you wanted me to replay uh, Spider-Man. Yes, Sam Wonk is just trolling me. Sam Wonk, go to bed. <laughs> All right, here we are on Sky Dragon Isle. Oh, it's snowing like crazy now? Oh, I'll be right back. We got some legit snow out there, friends. <laughs> Joe Cool 190 says, I'm in Surrey and you made me check for snow too. We've got like two or three centimeters here. So you, you may be a little buried. Right up we go. Hello, Sky Dragon. I've come to fight you and take your stuff. Hey, buddy. Welcome, humans. 
I am the Sky Dragon of the White Element. Well done. Thou hast gained the protection of the five dragons. Let me test thy skills to see if thou art truly worthy to enter the Sea of Eden. All right, here we go. Stealing the white plate in one. Here we go. Can he do it? Boom! Well, that made life easy. Yeah, six for six. Oh God. Okay, I was worried that was gonna kill Lynx. Here, have some cats. Really? What were those misses all about? Good grief. just healed him. He didn't even get a turn. Holy healing. Don't like the sound of that. Fuck! Ooh! That's new! All enemies become eternal nothingness! Get banished to the Phantom Zone! That's banished <laughs> to eternal nothingness? I don't, I don't agree.
This is gonna hurt. <laughs> yes, that did indeed hurt. Saved. Oh, I've got two. We'll use that, though. All right. Back in action. Not feeling quite as wounded. like to kill the dragon. Well, I'm glad I healed when I did. <sighs> Jesus! Oh no. Good lord. Jeez, I don't know if this is recoverable. I don't have a revive! <laughs> Invincible it is! <laughs> Norris is missing a level up, but, uh, that's fine. Sorry, Norris. <laughs> skills I acknowledge. I will grant thee the protection of the Sky Dragon. Link's received white, re white relic. The Dead Sea has disintegrated and the gates of time have been opened. 
With the divine protection of the six dragons, venture deep beyond the pearly gates across the dimensions. All right. Thanks, dragon. Element, no. Equip. White plate. Forever. Alrighty, well, that's some dragons dealt with. So, now we have a little bit of homework to do. We are in another world. And we're headed to the Shaman's Tent. It's a good thing I have this guy, because I would have no idea. I would be so lost. There are so many things that, like, if you don't have something to push you in the right direction, you'd just be completely adrift. You're Jurea, right? Yes. Oh, one must choose their own path, but as long as we are human, one will sometimes become lost. I pray that your journey be blessed by the guidance of the great six dragon gods. Okay, so we are showing the Tear of Hate here. How can this be? This is without a doubt a piece of the Dragon Tear. Dragon Tear. Serge, I shall bestow upon you the Dragon Emblem. It is the symbol of a Dragon Shaman. All right, we got the Dragon Emblem. The Emblem and the Dragon Tear have been handed down by Dragon Shamans for generations. Although the worlds are different, you should be able to receive aid from the other shaman with this emblem. Make haste to the alternative world. Ding. All right, we've done that. So now we're headed to home world? Yes, I would like to take your zip line, please. I will become the wind! Whee! I have become the wind. Board the boat, yes. Whee! All right, is it turnip time? No, it is not turnip time yet. What it is, is it's time to go to Homeworld. That's not where I want to go. Astral Amulet.
Okay. Now where am I headed? I'm headed back to Goldorf. <laughs> right. It does, I do, was just thinking that myself, B. Johnson, I do wish they had given you an item that just let you switch between worlds without trekking all the way back. An on-the-fly world switch would be real nice. Here we are. Uh, what was the item I got? The dragon something. I scrolled right past it. Dragon emblem. Uh, that is a dragon emblem. How did a foreigner like you get a hold of it? Well, welcome, travelers across the dimensions. Bring them before me. I don't know what, who or what this person is. Uh, yes, if it is your wish, Miss Tina, you have permission from the chief. You may pass, foreign travelers. What does Stina look like? As promised, I will lend you the dragon tear. I shall accompany you to the fort as well. Oh, well, that was easy. That was remarkably easy. Six dragon gods bestow protection upon we children of the planet. All right, save. Ting. <clears throat> All right. I am posing a task to somebody in chat. This is this is something I would I would appreciate somebody doing at some point. Uh which is I need somebody to go through all the vods and and get a clip of every character being recruited as well as clips of my roster getting ever bigger. That's that's what I need. I need a clip of every character being recruited and I need uh my my invent like inventory of characters ever growing. Oh, I don't want to lecture on that. I just want to use it. I look at my roster all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> Every time I recruit a character, it shows the roster. And Roik, thank you for the follow and welcome to the channel. See, this is why I need a larger community. Because if there were more of you, somebody would take up the mantle of responsibility. And Lord knows I don't have time.
All right, I am in Homeworld. We are here at Fort Dragonia. So you may recall that uh, last time we were here to get Draggy, we did all of the puzzles here already. <laughs> so we can just stroll on in. Pete Johnson says, if I wanted that, why didn't I tell you all on stream one? Because I didn't think of what I want it for until a couple of streams ago. I definitely didn't know I wanted that to start. Zapdi says, why didn't you tell us then? You wouldn't have said yes any more then. <laughs> You finally made it, yeah. But this is as far as you will get, yeah. It's a little too soon for you to get your original form back, yeah. All right, here we go. Fargo, do it to it. Let's get the rare steel right out of the gate. Or you can completely fail. That's cool too, I guess. He has feral cats too? That's not fair. Oh. Holy moly, that hit like a truck. Missing, Jesus. All right, can we get the rare steel? We cannot. And I'm definitely not sufficiently motivated to try for it. I'm not about to restart this fight over and over again. Volcano? Uh-oh. Ow! We definitely could have equipped the Dark Plate to somebody before this, yes. 
But I wasn't anticipating Lynx would take this kind of a beating in this fight. Here we go. That's some damage. Oh no. Wishing we had more HP about now. <laughs> Jesus! Do I have another recover all? Oh, I do. <laughs> Lair on in chat says, but what if less fit? Come on. Jesus, Fargo. Land a hit. Wow, we might just be done here. Oh, he's winded. We might survive this. Nobody cares about Norris. Uh oh. <laughs> well, goodbye, Norris. Bye, Fargo. <laughs> wow. 
I really needed that hit to land, and it did not land. I needed that hit to land, too. Oh! Got it in one! Impressive, Nya. I may have underestimated you, Nya. Anyway, I must get on with my affairs, Nya. Besides, it's too late. Goodbye, Serge. Nya. Right, I should probably heal up. Go up. We're really, like, we're putting in some work on advancing the story here tonight. Yes, story, you heard me. Surge, you must proceed alone from here. You must see and confirm for yourself who you really are. Truth shall manifest itself once you believe in your heart. Uh, all right, sure. All life on this planet was born in the sea. The life form softly slumbered within the womb of our mother sea. Until eventually they developed free will and were able to swim about the ocean freely. Then there came those that, not satisfied with life in the water, looked up from the ocean floor towards the blue skies and dreamt of the feel of the land. Eons passed before their preposterous dream became a reality, and they rose up from the seas onto the earth. All the land became full of all kinds of creatures. Among these, the dragon lizards and the more evolved reptites thought they would reign over the earth forever. And for a long while, it seemed that they would. However, the unforeseen coming of the Mighty One from the heavens suddenly smashed their kingdom to pieces. That one was known as Lavos, the Great Crimson Flame. Wielding absolute power, Lavos buried the dinosaurs, the kings of the land, in the space of a night. 
However, the timid apes who had hidden, lived hidden in the forests came into contact with the crimson flame that fell from the sky and evolved into humans. Or perhaps it was not evolution, but transformation. In this way, humans increased in number and filled the earth. The fearsome progeny of Lavos, who, like their progenitor, began to devour our mother planet. Hey, a pre-rendered cutscene, look at that. Haven't seen one of them in a while. It's wet! It's wet! I'm hysterical and I'm wet! Hey, there's the baby! Oh my. Wait, did I just bust out of the, uh, the dragon tier? Is that what happened? And he just strolls out naked. Just hanging dong. Hey guys, what's up? Surge! Surge. Not only did he find some clothes, he found his own clothes. Surge, you have regained your identity without being led astray. Your eyes, which foresaw the truth, shall help you to regain your trust among your comrades. There is nothing we can do about the Dragon Tear. Its shattering result does not come as a surprise. However, you also carry the fate of the Dragon Tear from another world. The broken pieces of love and hate, although contradictory, they are two sides of the same coin. A mysterious force may come to light when the two pieces are united. Perhaps this force will be the legendary Chrono Cross. The only problem is, the shrine which is said to give life to the Chrono Cross is nothing but a cavern inside Divine Dragon Falls. Surge, you may hold the key to bringing forth its powers. The dragon tear shattered, but transformed into the tear of love. Also, Everybody's here. Everybody's here. Oh, Dracus wants a joke.
All right, I've got a joke. Do I have a joke? No, I don't like that joke. Good grief. This is a very dire set of jokes. What do you call an observant potato? A spectator. Listen, I had to I had to make a decision. I picked a joke. standing on the save point. I walked off it. All right, here we go. Save, save, save. Ding, save, yes. There we go. That's all we've got for this evening, folks. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you to everybody who subscribes, everybody who follows, everybody who cheers, everybody who chats, and everybody who hangs out and lurks. It is a genuine thrill to stream for you. And I hope you have as much fun watching as I do playing. I'll be back tomorrow, same mat time, same mat channel, here on twitch.tv slash Wiggins, and we will be playing more Chrono Cross, although we are rapidly approaching the end of the game now. Um, but yeah, thank you again for tuning in, and I hope you're having a good time. In the meantime, you can follow me at Twitter, twitter.com slash Matt underscore LRR. That's where I post tweets. I have a YouTube channel, which I have linked for you in chat. That's where the VODs go. And if you're a subscriber here, you can join the Discord by making sure your Twitch account and Discord account are linked in Discord's back end, where my server will appear to you as if by magic among your linked servers. Additionally, I have an inst uh, sorry, a letterboxed if you like uh, my movie rankings. That's where I put those. So let's give a quick look on Twitch, see who is online, if anybody, that we can throw to. Oh, look at that. There's lots of people. Lots of people. Loads. All right. Uh, tonight, we are going to raid Mike Robles, who is playing Storybook Brawl. So everybody hop aboard this raid train, and I will see you back here tomorrow. Until then, so long, have a good night, and... Goodbye.